Okay guys, today is a special day. Um, if you look back at my archives, uh, if you're an older subscriber, you may recall that I made a video about Chimay Grand Reserve uh, in respect to cellaring three bottles. Three bottles for three years. Um, one bottle a year, of course. It was June 20th of last year that I started cellaring these. Um, and this is the first bottle. Uh, it is June 20th, Sunday, June 20th, 2010. So we get to crack open the first bottle and see how it's matured, uh, if it has at all, and uh, you know, record the results. And I'm quite excited. Uh, I actually forgot that it was <laughs> that the date was coming up. I mean, it was sort of in the back of my mind, but um, I kind of been really busy lately so I sort of forgot and it was only when I was looking at the calendar to check uh, my work schedule for next week that I realized holy shit it's June 20th today so uh, I better get cracking and crack this sucker open of course this is Chimay Grand Reserve Belgian extra strong ale Belgian quad 9% uh, alcohol by volume nice corked bottle um, if I had an active tripod at the moment, uh, I could show uh, opening this thing. Apparently the carbonation builds up as you cellar these things, but I um, don't have a tripod at the moment. Hopefully if uh, enough people click my ads, uh, I'll be able to afford a nice little decent tripod for uh, future reviews. So without further ado anyway, we're going to uh, get into this. Uh, I'm going to use an oversized wine glass. Uh, incredibly appropriate uh, glass for using when just testing beers uh, so anyway I'm gonna stop blabbing and let's get right in on it okay here we are I poured a bit of the uh, Chimay Grand Reserve aged one year uh, of course this is the 2009 edition of the uh, beer hmm I took the uh, the cap uh, the cork out very very carefully so I can't attest to whether the carbonation is built up any. It, it felt a lot stronger though it really wanted to push out but I kinda slowly wormed it out and it gave sort of a hiss heads died down already quite a bit but seems like it's a bit um, just a teeny bit creamier than like a just a regular uh, Chimay um, it's got that sort of creamy off-white color um, like it's died down but usually with uh, just a fresh bottle of Chimay Grand Reserve the head dies like almost instantly like but this looks like it I might actually leave a bit of a cap which would be nice and of course there's sediment floating around in this interestingly enough um, the sediment uh, I've ha I had these standing up as I cellared them and when I was looking in the bottle, the sediment did not uh, settle to the bottom of the bottle. It, it stayed suspended within the, in the beer. So that was quite an interesting effect to see. Okay, so we're going to do the aroma now. And you can look at the bottle while I'm doing that. Okay, now Chimay Grand Reserve has um, a fresh bottle of it, has some very nice sort of uh, port-like dark fruit notes to it. Uh, Michael Jackson has said that it's the most port-like of beers, and he was not off on his assessment there, I think. Um, wow, that hit is actually quite a bit more impressive than the regular, uh, just a fresh bottle. I'm quite impressed with that. Um, You know, the notes are not quite as sharp as they were. Uh, usually you get a fairly sharp fruit note with a bit more sweetness and a bit more alcohol. But now it's sort of... Um, the alcohol has been muted. And the dark fruits kind of blend. Sort of grapey notes, but it's sort of... Um, 
sort of a dry dark fruit kind of thing going on. Uh, a lot less sweetness in there than, uh, than in a fresh bottle. That's quite nice. Um, not overly impressive, but it's it's definitely there's definitely a marked uh, a change there from a fresh bottle. Okay, so we're gonna get right into the taste now. Wow. Oh man, that is smoothed right out. That has that is quite smooth. Another aspect of um, a fresh bottle of Chimay Grand Reserve is uh, the flavors are not, it's probably the only flaw really um, for a fresh bottle is that the flavors are not, um, they're not smooth, they're, it, it's not incredibly well balanced, it's not a, a, a nice smooth transition. Um, here much more so it's um, it's really smoothed out it's creamier it feels thicker on the mouth those dark fruit notes are there but they've blended now a bit still slightly harsh at the end um, it's sort of dry woody still a slight bit of alcohol you can taste Mm. I'm gonna enjoy this. Um, overall, um, some of the sweetness of the fruits has died away. Uh, it's not as harsh as it used to be. Uh, the mouth feel feels a bit thicker, creamier. Uh, it's much smoother going down. Uh, geez, and that's only one year. That is only one year of uh, cellaring. I am quite impressed. I was sort of um, skeptical that one year was going to make a whole lot of difference uh, with this beer. I, I was thinking I was going to have to wait till maybe the third year before I really noticed any uh, really uh, big difference. But no, uh, this is definitely a different beer than than a fresh bottle that I had a year ago. Still maintains the the sort of port like flavors uh, profile but it's a lot, a lot less cloying a lot less whiny less harsh um, much more smooth and creamy uh, I can only imagine that the next bottle next June is even going to be uh, better than this one I have some pasta for supper and I think this will probably pair with that quite well uh, as I said it does have some red wine port sort of flavors so and red wine goes good with pasta in almost all instances okay guys um i'll see you next time uh, it won't be a year from now uh it will be for the second bottle but uh hopefully in the next few days we'll have some more videos coming up uh so cheers uh bye bye